Hey everyone, welcome to a new, hopefully, weekly video series called Faster on Fridays, where we look at anything and everything that can make you faster on race day. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about these, or more specifically, the ultra low friction bottom brackets that you can get from companies like Ceramic Speed, SLF Motion, Coggle Bearings, and several others. So let's start by addressing the main reason somebody might buy one of those low friction bottom bracket. Dude, I just got one of those new ceramic bottom brackets. I'm gonna go so much faster. I'm gonna take like 10 minutes off my half Ironman time. Most people buy these low friction bottom brackets because of the claim that it will help them go faster on race day. Now, before we can investigate that claim, we have to understand a little bit about bike power, drivetrain friction, and how much power you need to overcome aerodynamic drag. Let me explain it like this. So let's say that this stack of dominoes represents the amount of power that you're generating directly at your pedals. Then as I'm biking along, I'm fighting three things. I have gravity, rolling resistance, and air resistance. Now, this air resistance, that V squared term in the equation, that's my velocity. What I wanna to try to do as a cyclist is I wanna to try to take as much of the domino stack from here and move it over to here. Because the bigger the stack over here, the faster I'm gonna go. So let's say that I'm biking along semi-flat road uh, and there's a gentle uphill. So I have a little bit of work going over here then it's kind of smooth, you know, not, not fresh pavement, but it's fine. So a little bit of work going over there. The rest of my power is going into overcoming air resistance. And again, that's that velocity term. So the big stack over here means I'm going pretty fast. But that's not actually what happens in real life. There's a, there's a cost to taking the dominoes from here and moving them over to here. That's the conversion, that's my drivetrain friction. That's the, the thing that I have to pay in order to get from here to here. So really, it looks like this. I've got my power at the pedals, and then I have a drivetrain tax. I have drivetrain friction that I have to overcome. So I have to pay a little bit there. Then I can overcome gravity, overcome rolling resistance, and finally, move through the air. Obviously, it's a smaller stack over here. I'm not going as fast. I have lost some of my dominoes to this drivetrain friction. And that's the idea behind those low friction bottom brackets. The idea is I don't want to pay as much in this conversion. I want to take a little bit of this domino and bring him back over here because by putting it over here, I'm gonna go a little bit faster. So that's the idea, to limit the loss going from your pedals to the road. But does that actually work? Well, yes, but you might be surprised by how much. Take a look at this graph from Friction Facts from just a few years ago. Now, Friction Facts was, at the time of making this graph, a third-party independent testing lab for all things drivetrain efficiency. So it's probably the most comprehensive and least biased data that we're probably ever gonna get as consumers. With the graph, Friction Facts also released the best and worst performing bottom brackets. And they said that the worst bottom bracket cost 2.13 watts, and the very best required 0.29 watts, which gives us a delta of 1.84 watts, which means if you were on the very worst bottom bracket that they tested, and you switched to the very best bottom bracket that they tested, you would expect to save 1.84 watts. I don't know about you, but my brain doesn't really, I don't think in terms of watts. I think in terms of speed, time, velocity, how much is it gonna save me, and how fast am I gonna go? To try and answer the question of how much time I can save with an improvement of about two watts, I use Zwift. Now, I know Zwift is not a perfect mathematical model, but it does give us some context. It gives us some information. And by using uh, a, my very own created uh, Pacer bot in an offline world, so we don't have any other participants to be drafting off of or interfering with the results, I was able to time how long it takes my Pacer bot to go around a course at differing power levels. So we did six runs. I did 300, 301, and 302 watts. 
and then I did 200, 201, 202 watts. And then by looking at the times, I was able to get an idea as to how much you might expect to save with a one to two watt improvement. After running the Zwift tests, I decided I wanted a little more realistic data. So I turned to an online bike calculator that uses the, the physics of overcoming air resistance, rolling resistance, gravity, and several other factors to try and predict the, the speed that you will go for certain power to the best accuracy that it possibly can. All the results are based off of the base power. So the time saved if you were starting at 200 watts or the time saved if you were starting at 300 watts. If you were starting at 200 watts and you went to 201, the bike calculator would estimate that you would save 16 seconds over a half Ironman. And in Zwift, I saved four seconds over about a 15 mile course. Going to 202, bike calculator shows 35 second savings and the Zwift showed nine second savings. We're not talking about a lot here, but 35 seconds over a half Ironman, it's not nothing, but we haven't even cracked one minute yet. If I go from 300 to 301, uh, I could expect to save eight seconds over my half Ironman. And in Zwift, I also saved eight seconds. I promise that's just a coincidence. They're not related. And then going to 302, I could save just 20 seconds over my half Ironman or 13 seconds in Zwift. I decided to take things one step further and actually plug my own personal Garmin data, plug it into bestbikesplit.com. Now, for those of you that don't know, Best Bike Split is a pretty advanced physics simulation of riding a bike. It is the most accurate model that we have that's currently available to just the general public. So I plugged in all my data from a previous race and then I increased, I, I simulated what my time would be if I increased my power by just two watts. And Best Bike Split said I would save 32 seconds. That is what one to two watts could save you over a half Ironman. So probably if you were to project that out over a full Ironman, you're looking at maybe 60 to 90 seconds. Finally, let's talk about durability. Now, durability is the thing that originally uh, caused me to want to get one of these low friction bottom brackets. I kind of saw things as, okay, well, the bottom bracket is a high precision piece of equipment and it's in not the best location on the bike. There's a lot of dirt and grime and water and stuff. And as I pedal, there's load on the bearings. So I want something that's pretty durable. I want a high quality product, therefore I want one of these more expensive options. Now, it's true, these ultra low friction bottom brackets generally do come with longer manufacturer warranties. So Ceramic Speed will actually give you five years on their standard product and six years on their higher end products. However, you can get the uh, Shimano Dura Ace bottom bracket for about 50 bucks, which is one sixth the cost of some of these ultra low friction ones. And it'll come with a three year warranty. So about half as much, but again, one sixth the cost. And it shows up here on the friction facts graph. Or let's look at SRAM. SRAM uh, GXP shows up here on the friction facts graph. And again, I would recommend maybe switching it out about every 10,000 miles. That's true for the SRAM or the Shimano bottom bracket. And the way that I ride, which is kind of a lot, 10,000 miles is two years. And that's Generally what I tell people, you should be replacing the bearings about every two years if you're riding a lot. If you've got a ultra low friction bottom bracket, it will last you at the very least five to six years, which for most people is the life of their bike. Or you can get a standard bottom bracket, which is gonna be one sixth the cost of the more expensive ones. And you'll probably be replacing it once every two to three years. Again, we're kind of in the same situation as looking at the friction and does it actually make you go faster? The answer is yes. Yes, it is more durable, but not by a lot. After all that, what conclusions, if any, can we draw? Oh, and yes, I got my haircut in between filming because this video took me so long to make. But anyways, my default answer when people have asked me this question in the past, I think still holds true even after I look at all this data. If you have a bottom bracket that's working for you, it, it doesn't need to be replaced because it's old or worn out or you're not switching standards, keep it. Don't upgrade if what you have is working. 
However, if you do need to make a change, if you're you know, getting a new crank-based power meter so you need a new standard, or your old one is worn out and you have to replace it, then it might be worth considering one of these low friction options, especially if you're a performance-minded person and you want to know that you're able to go as fast as possible on race day. But for the vast majority of people who are just participating in the sport, I would say no, these are not worth it for you and you should instead get yourself just a standard option, something, you know, 30, 40 bucks from your local bike shop. Just make sure it's installed correctly and that it's well maintained because if you do those things, you're going to be within fractions of watts off of what these ultra low friction bottom brackets are going to be and you're going to save a fair bit of money. But what do you think? Do you have a low friction bottom bracket? And if you do, do you think it was a worthwhile investment? Let me know in the comments down below what you think and if you think that I missed something in the video or something's wrong with my data or my testing, uh, let me know in the comments below and we'll see you next time. Bye.